Bethesda. No, not the place, the company. Now, I know what you're thinking. Bugs, glitches, false promises, the same engine over and over again. Hold on, stop screaming and look at this face. Who could stay mad at this face? It's time for a brief history. Bethesda Softworks was founded in 1986 by Christopher Weaver in, you guessed it, Bethesda, Maryland. They developed and published a bunch of games in the late 80s and early 90s until they got to what we all came here to see. Wayne Gretzky Hockey 3. Oh, and the Elder Scrolls Arena. Quite a few of their games were successful. So successful that in 2001 they created a spin-off company just for game development called Bethesda Game Studios, led by the Golden God himself. And that's what we're going to focus on, the game specifically developed by Bethesda Game Studios. With the previous success of the Elder Scrolls series, the first game that they released as this spin-off studio was the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. It released in 2002 to both critical and commercial success, and it was genuinely groundbreaking. Now, I have to admit a cardinal sin here. I've never played it, but, but, I have seen people play it, and that's totally the same thing. It put more emphasis on role-playing than the first two entries in the series, and its graphics were in a whole glorious three dimensions. In 2004, they released IHRA Professional Drag Racing 2005. Jumped the gun just a little bit there. If you haven't heard of this one, don't beat yourself up. Apparently, it was really bad, which is crazy, because it looks just so good. <laughs> Not really much to say about this one, it was a drag racing game which the title probably clued you into, but ironically it was quite slow and failed at its one job. Moving on. In 2006, Bethesda Game Studios continued their hit franchise with the masterpiece The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Like Morrowind, it was a commercial and critical success. It improved on nearly everything. Graphics, size, scope, voice acting, I can eat for a day with a single guy in. I, Devlin Norman, moves with such grace. Meme potential. Stop right there, criminal scum! Suffice to say, I've definitely played this one. I remember taking four days in a row off school just so I could stay home and play this game all day. Even in 2021, I still sometimes go back to create another hideous abomination, and there's nothing quite like hearing Sir Patrick Stewart tell you about how your hideous face haunts his dreams. Let me see your face. You are the one from my dreams. I love Oblivion. And despite the fact that for most of the game it's set in this sort of generic western fantasy setting, there are some really unique and spectacular moments that kind of set it apart from other RPGs on the market. In 2008, Bethesda came out with a game from a different franchise. They took the torch passed by Black Isle Studios and Interplay Entertainment and released Fallout 3 an open-world, post-apocalyptic RPG. It also improved on its franchise's predecessors, with notable features like 3D graphics, real-time gameplay, full voice acting, a famous actor in the tutorials, and hey, this is starting to sound like that Tom Cruise movie. No, not that one. It was familiar to both Bethesda and Fallout fans while still being fresh in gameplay and mechanics. Once again, it performed really well and made them a lot of money, so Bethesda had another hit franchise under their belts. I played quite a bit of Fallout 3, and I have to say that personally, the best part about it was the world building. It was just so immersive and genuinely fascinating to explore. Also, Vats is really fucking cool, and I will never get tired of watching a bullet just eviscerate a rad roach in slow motion. Following up on this success, Todd Howard moved into the transportation industry, where he built the world's biggest hype train, which was only recently surpassed by Cyber Pre-Order 20 out of 77. In the months leading up to their fifth Elder Scrolls game, Bethesda released trailers on YouTube, they posted billboards, they put content in magazines, and even aired ads on TV. They apparently wanted to focus on the realism of the game, and my god they nailed it. The trailer featured relatable things like walls, and... Australian fauna. In fact, I think Skyrim is the most lifelike video game I have ever played. I remember going to a mate's place the day that Skyrim released. We sat in the same room playing Skyrim on our separate computers for like 10 hours straight. It was glorious. Set in what I can only assume is real life Norway if Norwegian wildlife was really scary, Skyrim was everything it promised to be. Its game world was filled with wondrous nerd staples like dragons, elves, Nordic accents, so what happened at the watchtower. and most importantly, 
affordable real estate. They removed the class system from the previous entries in the franchise, they added new mechanics like dragon shouts, they overhauled spell casting, and they made sure to include a whole host of completely intentional bugs. Skyrim sold over 3 million copies within two days of launch, and that's pretty good. It then sold over 10 million by mid-December, becoming the fastest selling game on Steam. Now there were quite a few mods for Oblivion and Morrowind, but that number became absolutely ridiculous for Skyrim. The mod community was huge, and in my opinion it really extended and enhanced the content of the game. New quests, new followers, new gear, updated graphics, bear with loot, updated spells, expansion sized maps, crabs with monocles, you get the idea. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of Skyrim. With the support for a game as big as Skyrim with patches and DLCs, it was quite a while before Bethesda Game Studios released another one. In 2015, they followed their astronomical success with Fallout Shelter, the mobile game. Not quite as big budget, but it did build up that precious hype for Fallout 4, which was released later that year. Fallout 4 was once again supposed to be bigger and better in every way than its predecessor, so they hyped it up to match that expectation. Its release was, of course, huge, and it sold over a million copies in 24 hours just on Steam. Critics loved it, praising its improvements over previous entries in the series. It looked better and felt better while still retaining the core that made the Fallout series special. Also, Vats is really fucking cool. I played Fallout 4 a bit after launch, and there are some cool mechanics and settings, but I have to admit that I prefer Fallout 3 and New Vegas, and I know I'm not alone. The world felt a bit more empty, and the main story was a little less memorable, and after um, a while- Skyrim, the- No, Todd! We've already done that one! You dork. Go back to the chess club. I don't even like chess. In 2016, Bethesda released Skyrim, the special edition this time. It had all three DLCs, it had better graphics, and included a long sought after microtransaction system. It was basically just a remaster with all the content, and it came to the next generation consoles as well. I know I personally just played the original Skyrim because that's where my bear with loot was, but it was pretty cool that they remastered it, even though it probably would have been better just to work on the next Elder Scroll. In 2017, they brought us Fallout 4 in VR. Apparently, the mechanics transferred quite well to virtual reality, and people praised the combat and the well-adapted UI. Unfortunately, the fact that you needed a VR headset really limit- Um, Skyrim. No, Todd, we've already done- Skyrim for VR and Switch came out in 2017 too, and there's, there's really not a lot to say about it. It's Skyrim on more platforms. Get up close and personal with those... Nern roots. I guess it coming to Switch was pretty cool though, if you wanted to create your 7th stealth archer on a train or something. I still think they probably should have been working on the next- In 2018, Todd Howard announced something very special. Fallout 76. It was a Fallout game, but multiplayer. The first multiplayer game that Bethesda Game Studios had ever developed. The hype was unimaginable. The pre-orders came rushing in, and for good reason. The game was supposed to be bigger, better, and more ambitious than any other- Whoops. I'd recommend watching Internet Historian's video on Fallout 76 if you want to catch the whole dumpster fire, but the gist of it was that Bethesda made a bunch of promises that they clearly didn't deliver on. Todd Howard himself went to E3 and hyped the game up personally, saying things like this. It is four times the size of Fallout 4. And this. 16 times the detail. And even this. I think it's to see where we're putting Skyrim next. Wait, what? No, Todd, please, no, for the Skyrim for Alexa. No, this is not a joke. This is a real game that exists in our reality. It's text-based and it's a little more basic than the other versions, but you can actually play Skyrim on your Alexa. Obviously, Todd Howard and Bethesda are becoming a little bit self-aware at this point, but how did we get here? How did they release Skyrim so many times, and why is Elder Scrolls 6 not out yet? Well, Elder Scrolls 6 is on the way, apparently. Even though all we know about it is from a 30 second clip of some CGI hills. Quick, Todd, we need everyone to know that we're working on the next one. What do we show them? Well, we definitely don't have anything that resembles a game yet. Just get the Windows XP default background and put some text on it. 
Bethesda Game Studios has this reputation now where they not only release broken games that use outdated engines and assets, but also for not delivering on promises and pretty much leaving their players hanging. There's a reason this whole Skyrim re-release thing became a meme, and contrary to what Todd Howard says, I don't think it's because people are still just buying the game. I think the real reason is that Bethesda hasn't done anything that amazing since Skyrim, and every year that goes by leaves just a bit more of a sour taste in the mouth of their fans. I'm not saying I think I'm entitled to Elder Scrolls 6 just a few years after Skyrim came out, or even at all, but they've really tried to milk their existing games for as much money as they possibly can, and at some point it has to stop working. I'm cautiously optimistic that Starfield being an entirely new IP will give them fresh life and credibility, but we don't even know when that's coming out yet. And it still uses the creation engine! Sure, they say they're improving and updating it, but I'll believe it when I see it in 2030. In any case, I love some of their games, but I can't really say that I'm the biggest fan of Bethesda as a company at the moment, especially after their Fallout 76 fiasco. Again, go watch Internet Historian's video on it, it's fantastic. So that was just my little history and rant about Bethesda Game Studios. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.